A few weeks back, I looked at an obscure OEM exclusive Radeon card that marked the nadir of RDNA 2. The RX 6300 has an RX 6400's GPU, but a PlayStation 1's memory bus. Although this bottleneck, among others, proves to be particularly debilitating in modern games, I feel like I was a little harsh on the runt of the Navi litter, so I decided to try and find some redemption in a few older, less demanding games that might be more in the 6300's lane. This is going to be a quick video, I'm taking some time off this week and had to get this out pretty quickly, so if you want to know more about the RX 6300, the previous video will be linked at the end. Since making that video, I've attempted a couple of things to try and eke some more performance from the card. Alas, the BIOS isn't recognised by Red BIOS Editor or More Power Tool, so I think I have to accept that it's not getting any better than this. The test rig in question is the usual one. As GTA 5 performed pretty well last time, and the theme of this video is redemption, RDR2 seemed like a sound choice, but one that needed settings to be reduced pretty much as far as they'd go. Not because of the performance, however. At 720p, the game runs at an excellent 56 FPS average with lows of 43. So you might wonder why I didn't raise a few settings? Well, unfortunately, the 2GB VRAM buffer is the limiting factor, and I simply wasn't able to increase settings. You could certainly have a good time in RDR2 with the RX 6300, and the art style still looks incredible at times, but the actual textures and details look like dog shit. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is more like what I had in mind for the RX 6300. At 1080p, using the medium preset, it's possible to get a 33fps average frame rate, which makes for a very console-like experience. Given that, despite its age, SOTR has both Intel XE super sampling and ray traced shadows, and the RX 6300 supports these things, I thought I'd give RT a try. Yeah, I know that sounds kind of cruel and not in the spirit of the video, but I was curious. At XESS performance and medium ray tracing, it still managed to come close to 30 FPS, though it spends a significant amount of time below that and probably wouldn't be my preferred way to play. Jedi Fallen Order gives very similar results to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, whereby 1080 medium averages 34 FPS. The two major differences are that, firstly, medium is the lowest quality preset in the game, so would more honestly be called low, and secondly, the respawn Jedi games aren't exactly buttery smooth even on high-end hardware, so the 1% lows of 24 are actually likely to go even lower the longer you play. I still had the original 2015 version of The Witcher 3 installed after last week's Titan X review, and rather than update it, I thought I'd aim for the 8th gen consoles to see if the 6300 can get close to an Xbox One. Which, now that I think of it, actually has the same number of shaders, TMUs and ROPs as this card. I couldn't find the Xbox One equivalent settings, but the PS4 is said to run at 1080p with largely medium settings and a few small variations. And with as many of them selected as possible, I was able to get a 42 FPS average and 34 1% lows. Considering the original 8th gen consoles ran this game with a 30 FPS target, I think that's a pretty successful attempt. Likewise, God of War can play pretty well on a GPU that's similar to an HD 7790, so I thought maybe the 6300 was in with the shot. However, that wasn't to be the case. The original preset was intolerably slow at 1080p, and dropping settings to low couldn't even hit a cinematic 24fps reliably. FSR would be the obvious solution, but it does weird things to the exposure, so it's actually better to run at 720p, which averages an excellent 50fps, but drops as low as 25. Plus, running at 720p means changing your desktop resolution or playing in a window.
2 gigabytes of VRAM would be a little low for, say, Doom Eternal, but 2016's Doom isn't quite so fussy. I have a feeling that with some extra clocks, the RX 6300 could deliver a 60fps average and playable 1% lows, even at high settings. Alas, while it does get up close to 60 sometimes, it also drops into the 30s pretty often. Dropping to low improves the average to pass the 60 mark, but actually does nothing for the 1% lows. At the medium preset, 1080p resolution, and unlocked frame rate, Assassin's Creed Origins is giving close to a console-esque experience, except that it feels like an absolute mess to play. It breaks past 30fps some of the time, but it's also stuttering all over the place. Putting in a 30fps limit helps and would certainly be my choice for playing on this setup, but I feel like dropping below 1080p would be the best choice. Wrapping up with a couple of lightweight titles, Overwatch 2 plays just fine at 1080 low, and if your CPU can keep up then you should be able to enjoy 120fps on average. However, there are still drops as low as 60fps from time to time, so despite the allure of the triple digit frame rates, you might want to use a limiter to cap your fps, otherwise performance could be pretty uneven. Counter-Strike 2 isn't quite so bad. In fact, I had a pretty decent experience gameplay-wise. Well, apart from having to turn the volume down in one match as some guys started screaming non-stop. That, of course, isn't the RX 6300's fault, and it kept up a pretty decent 130fps average with lows of 83. While CS2 can be a pretty CPU-bound game, I found that even the fairly weak Ryzen 3 3100 can keep up with that kind of frame rate with relative ease. Being fair to the RX 6300 then, for a modern equivalent to the R5 240 and GT 710 it's actually pretty capable. While the £60 asking price on eBay in 2024 is ridiculous compared to the RX 5500 or RX 580-2048s, both of which far outperform the 6300 for similar prices, I could see them being a decent buy at £15-25. to £25. In a few years' time, when someone on an extreme budget is weighing up their options between a cheap discrete GPU and, say, Intel integrated graphics, this could be an excellent alternative. If it ever does come down in price, that is. Sadly, as a card that's seemingly only available from Dell, it's not like thousands of these are ever gonna flood the market. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.